once you have once you have in mind conceptually the components of the autonomic nervous system and the chemical messengers of the autonomic nervous system, you can begin to understand the syndromic nature of uh, dysautonomias, uh, particular abnormalities uh, manifest clinically in symptoms or signs where the, if you have a, an understanding of the of the components and the chemical messengers and the organization in the body, you can appreciate the syndromic nature of uh, the, the conditions. Dysautonomias present, they manifest in different ways, in different ways. And once you have in mind uh, the components of the autonomic nervous system and the chemical messengers, the organization, then you can begin to appreciate why such and such a person has such and such a syndrome. That's what this segment is about. What causes uh, underactivity of the sympathetic noradrenergic system? Well, by far the most common cause of underactivity of the sympathetic noradrenergic system is drugs. Uh, after that, I would think about uh, diabetes in an elderly person, uh, Parkinson disease. About 90% uh, about of patients with Parkinson's have, uh, have uh, evidence of some autonomic problem. And about 40% have orthostatic hypotension <clears throat> because of, uh, which can be related to the uh, underactivity of the sympathetic neurogenergic system. What about parasympathetic uh, nervous system underactivity? Uh, well, the most common cause is drugs. What about sympathetic neurogenergic system overactivity? Well, the most common cause is drugs. I think you get the idea. It's drugs every time. So uh, in somebody who's referred for dysautonomia, whatever that means, the first thing you do is get a complete record of all the drugs that the person is on and dietary supplements uh, because th that may be the key uh, to uh, helping the patient. But let's say it's not drugs. What are the symptoms or signs that would point specifically, specifically to a failure of the sympathetic noradrenergic system? Remember, this is, the, this is the arrangement of the sympathetic noradrenergic system. You've got uh, 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 postganglionic, non-myelinated, slowly conducting fibers. And norepinephrine is the chemical messenger. The signs include uh, ptosis. Ptosis means a droopy eyelid uh, because uh, that's... Uh, that's under sympathetic noradrenergic uh, regulation. Uh, meiosis, uh, that's the opposite of the belladonna effect. So the, pin, the, the pupils are small. Um, orthostatic hypotension because norepinephrine is absolutely required for tightening blood vessels uh, when the person stands up. And if you can't tighten those blood vessels just by gravity, the blood is going to go to the splanchnic area and, uh, uh, and pelvic area legs and blood pressure is going to fall. When it comes to symptoms, uh, symptoms of sympathetic noradrenergic system failure, orthostatic intolerance, that's because of the orthostatic hypotension, fatigue, exercise intolerance, heat intolerance, uh, um, and we'll go into some of the others. The, the concept is there's a syndrome. There's a, there's a, there are understandable symptoms and signs, which when you put together, when you can put them together, t tell you this, this looks like sympathetic noradrenergic system failure. For sympathetic hyperactivity, uh, it's kind of the opposite uh, picture. You have midriasis. Uh, the pupils are dilated. Um, 
you have cutaneous vasoconstriction, that's why you turn pale, or one reason you turn pale. The blood pressure tends to go up. There's slow gastrointestinal transit uh, because both norepinephrine and adrenaline have that inhibitory effect. There's insulin resistance. This can be relevant to people who have uh, sort of borderline uh, adult onset diabetes. Uh, symptoms uh, include uh, trembling. Uh, that's part of the uh, 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 attempt to get the, get the temperature up. Shivering. Um, salivation, the proteinaceous kind of saliva. Parasympathetic, nor uh, parasympathetic nervous system failure presents completely differently completely differently. It's a different syndrome. Uh, you have, uh, we talked about the, uh, the midriasis. Uh, Sicca syndrome means dry mouth and dry eyes. Uh, uh, because of the, uh, the withdrawal of vagal uh, outflow, there's an increase in heart rate. Uh, there's decreased ability to secrete acid. Uh, this is part of the reason why uh, why vagotomy has been used for uh, treating uh, uh, peptic ulcer disease for a long time. From the point of view of the uh, splanchnic parasympathetic innervation, there's uh, uh, constipation, classic sign or uh, a classic symptom of parasympathetic uh, 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 inhibition and in men, uh, erectile failure. Hyperactivity, just the opposite. There's too much saliva, too much uh, tear production. There's a tendency towards bronchoconstriction. That means wheezing. Uh, the, blood, the heart rate goes down. Uh, and there's, uh, with, uh, with a cholinergic uh, uh, agonist, such as uh, bethanicol or uracoline. Uh, there's a tendency towards uh, urination and uh, defecation. Hyperactivity of the sympathetic adrenergic system produces many signs and symptoms, signs including dilated pupils, vasodilation and skeletal muscle, increased heart rate and glucose levels, decreased serum potassium, and symptoms including increased emotional intensity and trembling, pallor, a racing, pounding heart, sweating, an anti-fatigue effect, and decreased bleeding.